Biological farming is a term used to describe a system that focuses on improving soil health by fostering the health of soil microorganisms. Rob Flynn is a soil consultant who helps farmers address any shortcomings in the soil. Rob also owns a limeworks and, along with others, has built a business importing fertilisers and producing mixes to suit the needs of farmers taking a biological approach to their farm management. Well, the business is a limeworks, which we bought 15 years ago. I could just see a need for lime. This is a very good quality lime. Also, everyone's very conscious of pH and whatnot, so there's one way to shift your pH is through lime. We've expanded with the Soil Matters Consultancy side of it. We do soil testing, make recommendations for pastures, crops, whatever. And then we mix our brews to whatever is required to make the soil right. And generally, most things we can mix. Some things have to go on separately. We're a certified BioGrow mixing site which gives us the flexibility of dealing with everyone. Seven. My main driver is that if you do something, you want to do it for the good of everyone and everything. My view on acidic fertilisers are when we're trying to make our soils alkaline, the big focus on pH, which is alkaline, uh, why do we keep pouring on acidic fertilisers? So that is, I, I know acidic fertilisers are generally more water soluble, that again leads to runoff and, and the conditions that we're experiencing now and uh, why we have overseer and everything else is we're measuring these things. The science around biological farming is all there. It's just a lot broader than putting X on to get Y. There's a lot of other factors in farming as in animal health and everything else. It's not just about dry matter. And there's more than enough science around there. And I think a lot of the art of farming is being lost. It's more textbook and without observation. The biggest thing with biological farming and when we take on new clients and they have this realization that there's actually something underneath them and they start being more observant and then they observe their stock and health and everything else. The difference between biological and organic farming, the principles are the same in that you look at the whole picture, uh, but definitely not. I, I do believe organic farmers do not concentrate enough on inputs uh, because basically they don't know that they can actually use these inputs. We work with nature, if you like, or gravity, and it comes off the top of the hill, works its way down, goes through a jaw crusher or a primary crusher and brings it down to a uniform size and then goes into the hammer mill, which ends up with your lime flour. So the whole system's on gravity and the trucks are fed out at the bottom end. And then from there, we have all different bins with our elements in to mix as we go. The mixes are made as needed, not preset. It is a recipe and, uh, you know, you've got to be very careful because you're using the farmer's money and it's got to work. And apart from that, when you get your elements up, we make another soil conditioner called Zoom, which then, if your biology's struggling, this helps to get your biology humming again. Over the last 10 years, we've developed a, a bit of a fascination, I guess, around looking at alternate ways of treating and fertilising our pastures and crops and things. It makes a lot of sense that if you can put less acidic based sort of type fertilisers and fossil fuel reliance fertilisers on your paddocks, it's probably got to be good for everybody. Rob at um, Soil Matters approached us about uh, trialling a couple of paddocks at Tamania and uh, we put those under, under a biological regime for about two years when we'd sort of had pretty limited results with doing conventional superphosphate and type applications. And uh, yeah, over, over that time, we definitely got a turnaround in, in the, the whole soil structure and the, and the worm life and things. So that sort of led us to do it over the whole property and we've just sort of never looked back. We haven't used any nitrogen-based fertilizers or acidic-based fertilizers for nearly eight to 10 years now. 
We found that under a biological system, there is definitely a marked improvement in stock health. I mean, scientifically, how we can quantify that number, I'm not sure, but we've had feedback from clients buying bulls and things that the bulls seem to be a lot quieter, and I'm sure that's something to do with, you know, if you feed them, well, they're on a high acidic-based pasture, superphosphate and things, it certainly seems to stir things up compared with coming off these type of pastures, and we've had you know, reasonable comment from buyers about that. There's always going to be a need for more, more science and, and research around these things. And you know, we started to do some work. Uh, we did a few tests with the ESR around um, beef sampling and, and um, omega-3 in beef and getting quite a considerable difference in omega-3 off the biologically farmed pastures. The feedback we've had with, with their Angus program with Countdown is that they see that there was a good demand for healthy, nutritious food and they were very supportive with our PGP application around trying to help develop that. But it's like anything, I think, to get more uptake of biological farming, it's really got to be consumer driven. And so to do that, we've really got to start getting some, some retail product happening that's certified biologically grown. And hopefully, you know, the, part of our PGP application was to um, identify and, and show that it had a, a better nutritional profile. And I think that's sort of what we're going to have to do with retail packaging and things. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.